Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and welcome to a little bit of a show and tell of some of my best vintage finds from 2021. Now you know if you've been watching my side hustling videos that one of my goals for this year is to spend a lot less and save up for a house or start saving up for a house that is. So I haven't been able to, you know, be as wild and free on Etsy as I normally perhaps <clears throat> haven't been known to be, but I do still have some vintage finds to show you from last year. And let's start off with something that you've seen the rest of the set, but I had mentioned in that video that I had picked up the brooch that matched the moon glow kind of leaf glass set that I picked up in LA last year. So I found the necklace, earrings, and bracelet of this. And then while I was editing that video, I realized I should really go on Etsy and see if I could find the brooch. And I was able to, this is unfortunately missing one tiny little pink rhinestone. So I'll need to buy and replace that glue one in there. And then of course it is also quite small for me. Normally I like a brooch a lot bigger than this and I'll show you some in a second. So this is quite small for me, but because it matched the other pieces, I thought I would go ahead and complete the set. And because it's small, usually if I find something on the smaller side like this, I like to have a pair. So I will keep on the lookout for another one of these. And if you see one, let me know. And I thought I would mention something else that was a match that I was able to find last year. I never anticipated being able to find this. This is a little 1960s, probably maybe 50s clutch. This one has one of those fold down handles that you can fold inside so you can either have it as a handle handbag or as a clutch. This is from Dover. But the main point here is that it is a metallic green clutch that almost nearly perfectly matches my bait metallic green shoes. And I do like to be one of those matchy matchy people who match their shoes to their handbag, to their belt, etc. I doubt I'll ever find a metallic Jaguar racing green like belt, but if if I could, that would be amazing. Um, so because I like to be matchy matchy, I was very, very pleased to have found this. And I think this was quite inexpensive as well. I do actually have the red version of these shoes as well. And I have a candy apple metallic red clutch that matches those. And I do have the final uh, colorway that these bait shoes came in, which is this kind of petrol metallic blue color. And I have recently spotted online a similar clutch to this in that petrol blue color, but it's quite pricey. So I haven't snapped that one up but it seems like such a rare match that it's hard for me not to, but we're saving. Think think about wallpaper, think about choosing tile, you know, in those moments, I really have to focus. A handbag that I did have on my wish list over on Etsy for a while and had been dreaming about, but it was just a little bit expensive for something that I don't wear, won't wear all the time or get a ton of use out of because it's um completely an evening handbag. I don't think I could wear this one for day wear, but it's just such a stunning evening clutch. It's all done in black kind of net with these inset rhinestones. It has a fun bar lucite clasp here up on the handle with a black satin lining. It's actually in quite good condition in here. It doesn't seem to be have used much. This one is Joel's original um, and it does still have its vintage mirror inside. So many handbags have these little like you could cut someone with these mirrors. So I guess it's kind of like a weapon in your handbag, which is nice. This can probably barely fit a phone. Yeah, a phone and a lipstick, maybe your car keys. I don't know, even that would be iffy. But as far as evening handbags go, it's kind of hard to beat this ridiculous sparkly number. I mean, look at that thing on camera. Wow, it's so fun. Um, of course it has like kind of a silver finish to the bag itself, but then it has a gold frame. So I feel like I could wear it with either, which at least adds some versatility to the situation. But let's face it, I just fell for it and I had it on my wish list for a long time. And I thought, you know, somebody else is gonna snap that up and I'm gonna be really bummed. So eventually it was me who snapped it up and now it's here. Moving back to talk about a few more costume jewelry pieces. This one is another one you've seen here on the channel before. It's this giant rhinestone bat brooch that is just honestly to die for, for a slightly gothic leaning person like myself, obviously having a very, you know, chic Halloween brooch like this. Although I have seen one like this, that's a giant pumpkin. And I do kind of want the pumpkin one as well, but I've been good and so far haven't ordered it. But last year I picked up this root beer and citrine colored rhinestone bat brooch here. I have seen this one in black and it was on my favorites list and somebody else snapped up the black one before I could. And so I had to give in and get the brown one before that happened again and I lost him forever. And of course, this is much more the sort of scale that I like when it comes to brooches. The more giant, the better. But I look forward to cherishing this rhinestone bat buddy for years to come. And another giant brooch. This one is unsigned and kind of crudely made in the back, but the front is still shiny and nice. This giant silver swoosh kind of check mark little flourish brooch here, probably from the 1980s or 90s, I would guess. Um, it's a nice oversized situation that I just love. We all know I love a little bit of a 
sci-fi leaning sort of a mid-century modernist brutalist sort of style i either want to dress like a sort of like pirate vampire or a some sort of like replicant uh you know sci-fi dame uh, it's a neo-noir or noir you know and this is kind of somewhere in between all those things this i believe was under ten dollars so another one of those bargain finds where i'm just on etsy searching for fun finds under ten dollars this was one of those uh, small serotonin moments, you know, where you just need a little bit of endorphins from hitting the buy now button. I think that was what happened here. And completely opposite on the spectrum of <laughs> vintage kitsch jewelry, we have this little brooch here, which I say little, it's quite large, uh, is a like tiered cat brooch. Um, this is very similar to some, I believe Joseph of Hollywood is who did these cat brooches in the 1940s. I think this one might be a 1980s copy. It's unsigned and I have no idea really, um, but it was cats, uh, like a little cat, cat's bust brooch. And it just is so ridiculous. Like I wouldn't want to wear this in a very cutesy way because this to me is quite cutesy, but I would want to contrast that with something quite sharp on a black dress with like big cat eye eyeliner or big cat eye sunglasses. I think it'd be quite fun. And I am a big cat lover, for those who do not know. I, I actually am slightly afraid of dogs, uh, just because I never grew up with them or around them at all. So their energy is uh, a lot for me. And I much prefer cats who kind of just ignore you and like if they play with you, you feel blessed, you know? That kind of a thing. I suppose as someone who is also slightly antisocial myself, I relate to cats in that way. They, se they seem to be quite introverted and in that I can understand them. And another hefty brooch here is this rose celluloid brooch. I'm not exactly sure when this one is from. The back makes me think, like it's not a very sophisticated pin back, so I'm thinking it's maybe 30s or 40s, but I'm just not sure. And whenever it's from, I like it. It's just gorgeous. It looks actually quite nice against this navy. I should wear this with navy. I hadn't even thought to pair those together yet, but I guess red and blue always do go together, but it's a little patriotic for me. Um, don't usually lean that direction, but this roses brooch, just so pretty on a black dress, on a black blouse on anything. Mm. And of course, red toned accessories like this are always good because they tend to match my lipstick when I'm going out and about. So it always matches something I'm wearing because I'm usually wearing red lipstick, occasionally dark purple or black, but you know, it, red is my neutral. And the last jewelry item I have to show you today is this giant rhinestone brooch, or at least it looks like a giant rhinestone brooch. And that's because this is a duet clip. This is actually two dress clips that clip onto a pin back. So you can be wearing them as a brooch. You can wear them like so, or you can unclip these and they slide off the pin back here. I'll show you in a close up as well. And they become dress clips. They're actually quite a good size for dress clips. These are really nicer than any of the other rhinestone clips I have in my collection. This one does not, oh, it does. It's signed Deja, like Deja Vu. And of course this neckline, as some of you have noticed, is a very good uh, neckline for dress clips here. So you can wear them like this, you can wear them here, you can wear them all over the place. In fact, this is quite fun. Um, it's a lot right now with the other jewelry I have on, but you know, if I were going out to dinner tonight, perhaps I could pair these on as well. This is only the second duet I have in my collection so far. They are a little bit more on the pricey side. This one wasn't too bad though, so I went ahead and snapped it up as soon as I saw it. I do have a couple of clothing items to show you today as well, so I'll go ahead and jump over on set to show you those, but I have a 1940s suit here that I found from a seller who seemed to be liquidating a lot of different suits. This is actually the same seller where I got the golden yellow suit that I wore in the Halloween lookbook last year. I haven't modeled that in proper lighting for you yet, but I picked up this golden yellow suit last year, but then I also found this gray and black suit from them as well. So here's this heathered gray, probably late 40s, early 50s suit that I picked up from this Etsy shop that I will link below. I can't, I think it's Beauties of Time Past. Something with a B. I will link their shop below because sometimes they pop up with these amazing suit pieces and I was very happy to add this gray suit to my collection. And then as we know, I am a huge fan of the color green, all shades of green, really. I just, I love green. It's my favorite color. So the fact that I didn't have a vintage suit in green was somewhat disappointing to me. And I've always been on the lookout for especially a dark green vintage suit. So when this one popped up on Etsy, I had to have it, especially because this fits me quite well. If anything, I have a tiny bit of room in this suit, which is always nice. This green suit has some absolutely lovely details like these curved arrow sections here on the jacket, just totally stunning. 
And I'm actually excited because I'm going to be wearing this suit out and about this weekend because I think I have a day out antiquing with a friend of mine planned for this weekend. I think I'm going to wear this suit. And then I do have a few items to show you that actually I picked up this year, but I did not purchase them. I was gifted them. So I wanted to show you these two items here that fit me really well that were actually gifts that I received in my PO box. So thank you very much for thinking of me. Firstly, there's this navy blue suit jacket. This is again, probably from the late forties into the early 1950s, has a lot of lovely details going on here with these seaming and these kind of strange like teardrop shaped button areas on this jacket. Just beautiful, of course, pairs really well with gray. And I think I can pair this with other colors as well, like a dark red skirt perhaps I have in my wardrobe that I think this would go well with too. This one does not have a matching skirt. And funny enough, the only other navy blue suit jacket I have in my collection, I also don't, doesn't have a skirt. So I uh, can't find a full navy suit, but hopefully one day. I'd love a very like, mm, I don't know, masculine looking, double-breasted, very strong-shouldered 1940s navy suit sometime. So that's always on my radar. And the other item to show you is this black coat, which is just so chic and honestly to die for. This is again from like maybe the early to mid forties. It seems to have a little bit of a lingering thirties shape to it. It's very streamlined and very sleek with this A-line skirt on here. And then this absolutely giant exaggerated collar and super amazingly cool eye-shaped buttons. These are eyes, right? Like you see what I'm saying? So it's a little bit Salvador Dali. It's a little bit Scaparelli looking. It's definitely the chicest piece of outerwear in my wardrobe now. And I'm just thrilled to have this. Thank you again so much for sending it to me. You know who you are. And then also as part of the same gift, I was sent a Lillianne suit that just barely fits me. Um, there is actually a ton of seam allowance in the skirt. The skirt does not fit me. The jacket just barely fits me. I'm not showing it to you today because I need to do some alterations on this, which I may film for a video. But the, a lot of times in mid-century suiting, they leave very wide seam allowances in the skirts. And there's no reason to do this. It's a waste of fabric unless you are intending to make them alterable in the future. So I assume the reason that all that seam allowance was left in there is if you change sizes and you had invested in this very expensive suit, you would want to be able to keep wearing it, say after, you know, kid number two or whatever. So they have very wide seam allowances in the skirt. And I think I'm going to go ahead and get in there and let it out. Although that does make me nervous, especially with something like a valuable Lillian piece. So I haven't quite, uh, you know, delved into that yet, but I do want to. So bother me to see it in the comments and then maybe I will get to it. I do have a few more kind of mm, holy grail-ish handbags to show you today. Uh, you know, I try at this point in my collecting journey to only add things that feel like the best of the best to me. Sometimes I'll see things that I've wanted for a long time, but if they're in bad condition, I'll skip them. But uh, this was one of those times where I saw something that was finally in a nice condition. This is a Plastiflex handbag in ivory, of course, with rainbow threading. So the way that Plastiflex are usually constructed is you have these little plastic tiles, like Legos almost, and then there's a faux leather, usually a coated cotton ribbon that goes through them all to hold them all together. In fact, I can never help but think that I really need to work with someone who knows how to do 3D printing to recreate these tiles digitally or like design new tiles and like 3D print a bunch of these and make my own Plastiflex. So that's one of those like dream time projects because then we could print them in like all sorts of different colors of acrylic and stuff like that and i think it would be a very fun like product if i were to ever like launch a product or a line to do plastiflex handbags in various colors and like replicate these but the only thing that stops me is like do we need to be making new plastic out in the world i don't know what is your thoughts on the ethics of remaking plastiflex handbags let me know another 1940s handbag that i absolutely could not leave behind was this buddy this looks like cord, but it's not, uh, it's actually fabric made to look like cord, I think, like C-O-R-D-E. I have a lot of cord handbags. This one looks like a cord handbag, but I think it's actually just fabric that has like a ribbed kind of texture. Very similar looking to cord, but not cord braid itself. But this is a lovely oversized clutch in black, yellow, green, and pink with this very fun brass accented little clasp on the front here. Opens up like so. And it has a nice black lining in here. Again, very clean lining. It almost looks unused on the inside. It still has its little attached coin purse in here. No mirror in this one though. So this one's probably had a mirror to start with. It has no name or brand name or labeling of any kind. And you know, you can kind of probably tell that it used to be a little bit brighter. It's a little dingy on the outside, but I'm willing to look past it because it's just so brilliant in yellow and green and black like this and the stripes. Oh my God, it's just so fun. Again, I wore this in the Halloween lookbook last year for a moment, so you may have seen this one before, but I just wanted to show you in a little bit more detail what this buddy looks like. Again, another Etsy find. I get questions about like what my favorite Etsy shops are, and I don't have favorite shops. What happens is for things like this, 
Uh, I will type in 1940s clutch. I will set it to United States vintage and set it to like most recent listings. And like this was the third result one time. And I said, yes, thanks. That's exactly what I need today. Um, so I don't search by shop, I search by item. And even then, sometimes very vaguely, I'll just put in 1940s clutch and see what happens. And sometimes things like this are what happens, which is actually how this last handbag I have to show you today came into my life as well. As I've mentioned in some other videos, I've started collecting vintage beaded box handbags um, or vintage beaded handbags in general. It can be hard to find them in good condition, however, and they are quite collectible and therefore quite pricey, which is why when I found this buddy, which is another one of those like iris bead handbags in absolutely like like new condition this one uh this is obviously not a box it's more of a hinge style this actually hinges open like so um but again like new it still has its comb mirror coin purse all kinds of goodies inside as well in this nice satin lining in this gorgeous copper and like burnished gold color oh my god amazing this was 25 dollars the bargain of a century, honestly. This should have been $225, especially in this condition. But, you know, uh, I'm not one to complain. So I'm happy to have added a bronze beaded bag to my collection, especially for such a bargain. And I actually did plan some of my recent spider and bug brooches to match. Uh, that's the nice thing about these beaded bags as well, is I can find similar colored beads to make more matching accessories. Because again, I'm the queen of matchy-matchy. I love it, okay? I can't... Uh, what not to wear back in the early 2000s would be very disappointed in me for my matchy matchiness. It's old fashioned in the way I like best. And this actually wasn't my only beaded bag find last year. This was just my best bargain because it's again, like new and again, under $30, which I can't say the same for a few of the other ones I picked up last year, but I'll show you those some other time. I have to make an entire box bag beaded handbag collections management video. So uh, let me know if you'd like to see that soon and I will bump it up on the schedule. So those were some of my best finds from 2021. Of course, I'm doing my best to, to not <clears throat> find much here in 2022. I still have found a few things like, for example, maybe this, this necklace, for example. Um, so I still, I haven't been, you know, 100% perfect in my, you know, trying to achieve my goals, but uh, hopefully we'll still get there. We'll see how I do. I'm, you know, trying to go cold turkey is never really the answer. So uh, I'm afraid once, when, when really truly great bargains appear, I just am powerless to resist them. So I still have a few things to show you later in the year, I'm sure, that I'll pick up here in 2022. But until then, just bother me about showing you the rest of those box handbags, huh? And then I'll get to it. Thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon. And I'll see you then. Bye.